everybody. Hi, everybody. Hopefully now you can hear and see me. Welcome to Radical Health with Anne Louise and Friends. And today we're going to be talking about uh, things that are just between us girls. So in that vein, I have a wonderful doctor who's on my telephone right this very moment, Dr. Natalie Drake. Natalie Drake, please say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Yes, and the reason that we have Natalie Drake with us is because Dr. Natalie Drake was my physician who allowed me to do a very unusual procedure. And it was a procedure just between us girls that was very helpful in terms of vaginal rejuvenation because when you get to a certain age and stage of life, many of your soft tissues need a little bit of assistance. They need strengthening, they need lubrication, you can get atrophy all over your body. Well, this is a particular technique, which I'll have her explain to you in just a minute, which has been very successful for women with vaginal atrophy, women who have had problems with sexual intercourse at a certain age and stage of life, and women that are finding that they have less bladder problems because of this new technique. So Dr. Natalie, this is how we're going to do it. I'd like you just to introduce yourself once again and tell everybody a little bit about your, your background, because I felt so comfortable with you when I was in Texas, because I know that you're a Duke University graduate. So Dr. Natalie Drake, take it away at Practice Happiness. Thank you so much, uh, Anne Louise. It's so good to, to talk to you, and, and, um, and uh, it was so good to interact with you before. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So, well, I'm, again, I'm Dr. Natalie Drake, and I have a practice in, in the Woodlands, Texas, and my background is this. I, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma Medical School, and I did my residency in OBGYN in Dallas, Texas, and then I did additional training at Duke University in neurogynecology and pelvic reconstructive surgery. And my my love is um, non-surgical um, pelvic floor disorders uh, and pelvic dysfunction. So, so Thermiva, when Thermiva came out in 2015, I was absolutely blown away by by um, how it could help women. I felt like in um, female medicine there was this huge black hole where we had nothing to offer women with a, with a certain amount of problems. And I felt like in my practice there were a lot of women that I, I, I couldn't really help until this came along. And so I, I was so excited. I'm still so excited about this procedure. And it's helped a, a large number of women nationally. Well, let me just say that this is a this is something that you offer if, through Practice Happiness. I know you're in Houston, the Houston area. Yes, the Houston area. Yes. So, and, and do you think it's worthwhile for women? I mean, I underwent the treatment. It was three different treatments. I'm a big baby when it comes to any kind of treatment. But I, <laughs> I and she knows. Dr. Natalie knows. We had to talk about health and and vitamins and and healthy desserts all during you know the treatment it's about 20 to 30 minutes and it you use it's kind of like a um radio frequency actually it is it's it ra is radio it's ra yes. so you really have to trust the individual you know that you're working with because you're in a very uh vulnerable position shall we say and you've yeah. got the doctor that is utilizing this particular technique with a with a kind of like a hand piece uh you're grounded during the whole technique it, it doesn't hurt it's it's very warming actually to be quite yes. honest with you but the results were remarkable women use this that have had drop bladders you know and and um, incontinence they use it of course for sexual dysfunction and it has been remarkable in terms of the kind of results that women get who are the women dr. Natalie that are most that are the most likely, would you say, candidates for this type of process? And again, it's Thermiva, T-H-E-R-M-I, capital V-A. So who are the candidates for this kind of procedure? Um, well, there's a, there are a number of candidates for this procedure. I pretty much think any, any grown woman is a great candidate for this procedure. But the, the, my patients have a tendency to fall into two major categories. Uh, um, younger women who have, have given birth, who have a, um, stressed incontinence, the kind of um, leaking from their bladder after they cough, laugh, sneeze. Women who... Um, uh, you know, they want to play with their kids or jump on the trampoline, but they're limited because they'll leak from their bladder when they do this. Or the other typical type of patient is perimenopausal or menopausal patients who have dryness or severe dryness enough to affect intercourse <laughs> or affect 
um, you know, just when they wear yoga pants, uh, it's uncomfortable for them and they have chafing, et cetera. Um, but a lot of women, it's amazing the number of women that have um, dryness enough to affect their quality of life, whether it is just with the exercise and yoga pants or uh, enough to affect intercourse and, and the relationships. But it's, a, it's an amazing number of women who have this. You know, and it's amazing that now more women know about it. So the procedure consists of about 20 to 30 minutes, as I recall. I, yes. I had the three procedures done. And then the question is, you're young, who, who has been your oldest patient? Let me ask you this. Are you, are you ever too old for this kind of rejuvenation? You know, women will travel throughout the world to go and get facial rejuvenation or some sort of plastic surgery or any kind of anti-aging technique. This is truly an anti-aging aging technique for for another part of your body so i yes. guess my question to you is how old is your oldest patient and how young is your youngest patient okay so my oldest patient is has been 78 and my youngest patient um, is 31 so far well wow, so that's yes. quite that's quite an age range Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Would you think it'd be worth, if for, for those of my followers, my fans, those people that are on Facebook right now that are watching us, following us, listening to us, is it worthwhile for them to come and see you because you're, in, you know, you're, a, you're an actual doctor? Do, do people do this technique that don't, don't have your credentials? Yes, actually, a, a, a number of people do this procedure who don't have the background or experience in treating these kind of conditions. Um, and I do think it's important, no matter who you go to, it's, it's important to go to someone who has a background in treating urinary incontinence, who has a background in treating pelvic dysfunction. Pelvic um, dysfunction. Yeah, pelvic dysfunction, you know, uh, uh, pain with intercourse, uh, vaginal atrophy, vaginal dryness, stress incontinence, urinary urgency, um, or the kind of conditions that come along with that. Because there are, there are other things that could be wrong or you could need surgical intervention. And people who aren't experienced in treating these conditions might not know the difference and it might not be the right procedure for you. So you, so you need to make sure that it's the right procedure for you and you need to go to someone experienced in public dysfunction? Well, to me, I mean, it's worthwhile taking a lovely trip to Texas, to the woodlands to be exact, and to see you, because I felt so comfortable, literally, in your hands, and you could have the procedure done. There, there are three treatments I think you recommend. Do you have to wait two weeks between each treatment? Um, uh, it's one month apart. I, I wouldn't get them any closer than three weeks, and I would try not to go more than five weeks apart between the treatments. But yes, they're three weeks apart, and you were right. They take about 22 to 27 minutes per treatment. Wow. Uh, yeah, and, and, um, and there's no anesthesia required, and there's no downtime afterwards. You can resume all activities, including intercourse, directly afterwards. And absolutely no anesthesia is required for the procedure. Well, it's pretty remarkable. So how do people locate you? They go to Practice Happiness. Do you give a description of the technique a little bit online? Yeah, I, I give, um, there are descriptions of the technique online, and there are some videos, and there's a webinar if, if people have questions, and there's a way for people to contact me, and it's, it's at www.practice-happiness.com, um, <laughs> and I have a YouTube channel, and they can go onto my website, and they can take a look. There, there are, uh, there's an area they can read all about the technology, or they can watch the videos. I love it. So I want to thank you very much. I don't know if we have any questions from our audience here, but are there any questions? I'll ask Teresa because it's just between us girls, and Teresa's with me today. Are there any questions, Teresa, from any of our viewers? We do have a question. We have um, a question. Can you stay on the oh, line a little bit? Of course. Oh, of course. Okay. Our viewers are finding this very interesting because they haven't not heard of these procedures before. And one question is, are there any complications? Complications, good good question. Are there any complications? Yes. Okay, well, uh, nationally there have been no birth or blisters reported. Uh, the only uh, issue that has uh, people have encountered is occasionally people might get a uh, bladder infection afterwards if they are prone to bladder infections hmm. because we do use ultrasound gel during the procedure. Oh. So, there are people that are prone to bladder infections, say, after intercourse, 
um, a lot, you know, that's why we recommend uh, women to uh, uh, empty their bladders after intercourse in order to prevent bladder infections. But I've had a couple of women that have had bladder infections after the procedure, so we recommend emptying the bladder after the procedure to prevent that. But uh, other than that, nothing. Uh, not, yeah, I've not really ha- not had any complications. No, uh-uh. no blisters or burns, and and um, it's it doesn't get warm enough to actually produce a burn. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Yes. No. 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 So the, uh, the the requirements for the procedure are that you are up to date on your pap smear screening and that you don't have any abnormal uterine bleeding that hasn't been diagnosed. I mean, and so, that's it. right, and I mean, I mean, that's that's just good medicine. That's that's yes. good good preventive medicine. Um, exactly. Well, I thought that the procedure was outstanding. Uh, meeting you really revved up my confidence in the procedure, quite frankly, and knowing of your credentials. And and as, as you do the procedure from t- from treatment to treatment, it gets gets more comfortable. And and I was really aligned with everything that you did because uh, uh, earlier in that year, I had been to see the people down at Safe Passage. Clear Passage is what they call themselves, Clear Passage in, uh, in Florida. And they work a lot with pelvic floor disorders. And quite frankly, I had never heard about pelvic floor disorders, but there are practitioners all over the country that specialize in the pelvic floor. And one of the things that they do are use these, these little tools that allow you to kind of stretch the pelvic floor internally. And it's been marvelous help for women that have had all kinds of issues after childbirth, before childbirth, because of menopausal dysfunction, atrophy. So this is a whole new arena. It's a whole new promised land, so to speak. And I'm so delighted that you were with us. If there are any more questions, I'll just ask you to hold down for just one more minute. And I'll ask you, Teresa, any, anybody else that yes, has a question? Yes, we have a viewer that w- who would like to know what exactly happens to the vaginal tissue with the procedure. Okay, doctor, doctor, okay, you can hear, can everybody hear, can, can everybody hear, okay, great, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so so the so regular frequency is basically just a fancy word for heat, and, and what happens is we heat the tissue up, and um, in that heating process, you're inducing the, the tissue to produce and remodel collagen. It's almost like tricking the tissue into thinking that there's an injury when there's not, and so what what it does is it remodels its own collagen and produces more collagen. The remodeling starts right away with each procedure, <laughs> and then the new collagen. <laughs> Information takes a, oh, can you hear? I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm just saying it's remarkable. I'm wondering if oh. people can do this in other areas of their, th- this is what they do now for the neck and the face, from what I understand, with something called tripolar. So this is very avant-garde and very, uh, very up and coming. Yes, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful procedure for producing collagen. It absolutely is. So yes, it produces collagen, and that, it, collagen is the structural protein involved in, in um, basically the building blocks of your tissue. So so about two to three like, re, uh, I'm sorry, two to three weeks out of each procedure, you begin to produce new collagen, and that takes about two to three months after each procedure to fully um, have uh, uh, all the new collagen formed. So when you have new collagen formation, you improve the structural support and the integrity of all the tissues and have remodeling of the tissues. And that's how you improve the stress urinary incontinence by providing structural support to the bladder neck. And then the remodeling helps with the vaginal atrophy. Uh, and we also think that the, um, that the procedure and the heat improves. We, can't, I, we don't have this proven in the studies, but we truly think that it improves blood flow to the pelvic uh, musculature and to the, um, the vaginal tissue. And we think that somehow or another through that improving the blood flow, it also makes the nurse work a little bit better. Wow. So we've been using it to treat women who either after childbirth or through menopause don't, don't feel intercourse the same. If they're having trouble having orgasms or they just feel like intercourse doesn't feel the same, um, we've been using Thermiva to treat that in addition. Um, and it helps urinary urgency, and we think that that helps urinary urgency through decreasing the overall vaginal um, atrophy, which is a general inflammatory state of the vagina. So between producing collagen, increasing the structural support of the vaginal tissue, decrease 
reducing the inflammatory state, decreasing the vaginal atrophy, improving blood flow, and potentially making the nerves work a little bit better, <clears throat> and also increasing the uh, pelvic muscle uh, strength, we can, we can improve a number of conditions related to pelvic floor dysfunction. That was an excellent question. Uh, an excellent question. You gave an excellent, outstanding answer. So I guess, I guess on my question to you, would women then, after the procedure, still use any kind of um, even natural estrogen kind of um, suppository to just ensure that those tissues remain as youthful and collagen rich as before? They can. They can still use them. Um, a lot of women don't necessarily you know, enjoy using suppositories, so it's not required, um, but, but they certainly can. Okay. Any other questions? Our next question fits right in with yours, Anne Louise, uh, is after the three procedures, what is the maintenance? Oh, good question. Good, yes, question. good question. What is the maintenance, Dr. Drake? So, okay, initially, if you've never had treatments, we recommend a package of three, and then we think afterwards, patients, depending on uh, their own aging process and, and how they process collagen, we think patients will need a single yearly treatment as maintenance, not a package of three, but a single treatment yearly as maintenance. So a single single treatment for, for maintenance, which is good because then you can, re, you can examine the tissue, see how people are doing. I think it's very helpful. I mean, it's, it's an area that is of great sensitivity in more ways than one with so many women, and nobody's talking about this. So I'm just very grateful that I bumped into you, which was really a, an act of providence. I was in the midst of updating my book before the change, which all of our fans and viewers need to pick up today. <laughs> Um, and I, I added a little bit to the book about the whole concept of p pelvic floor, pelvic floor disorders, and this certainly is, is part of all that. So um, I'll, I'll thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Teresa, are there any more questions? As you know, I can't see the questions. Um, no other question just yet. We do have links posted on the live feed feedback. Um, oh, yeah, we've got li links posted, so everybody will be calling you, Dr. Dr. Natalie, and you deserve to be very busy because she has such a pleasant way about her. She made me feel so comfortable, answered all of my questions. Yeah, and you're very interested in health and healing, so you know, you're almost like a partner in health, so I felt really very privileged to be with you. So I wanted, oh, I felt privileged to be with you, too. Well, soon we'll see you again. <laughs> we'll Thank be you seeing so you again. Much, Dr. Louise. You're welcome. Oh, Thank you. Uh, take care. Thank you. Lots of Thank lots of love. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed being with you. You are so welcome. Let's all thank her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, at some point we'll be able to get a split screen when we get a little more sophisticated with Radical Health with Anne Louise and friends. What I wanted to tell you though with regard to Just Between Us Girls, that that procedure was life-saving for several of my other clients whom I then referred to Dr. Natalie. So for those particularly for with urine incontinence and, and a sagging bladder where the only remedy would have been a pessary in years, years ago, it's, it's pretty, pretty mind-blowing. And it's the same technology, again, that they now use for natural facelifts, I think. The tripolar that they put for the chin and, and for the face, I've seen that advertised quite a bit in some of the newer magazines. So this is up and coming. Uh, you're grounded during the procedure, for those of you concerned about the EMFs. And if I can do it, you can do it. I can tell you that. The other thing I wanted to make you aware of, just between us girls, is that there are other ways in which you can make sure that your tissues are lubricated. And that, of course, is an area where I feel comfortable giving you information, and that is in the area of essential fatty acids. So if you're dry in any of your areas, any of your, the tissues are dry from the vag vagina to the skin to dry eyes and so forth, I want you to consider essential fatty fatty acids. Particularly for dry eye syndrome, we need to look at the omega-3s and omega-6s. It's either one of them which will be your, your linchpin to get everything moisturized and lubricated the way it should. 
it's, it's about uh, one to two grams, sometimes up to four grams a day of the omega-3 that you get from a good fish oil product. Uniki has something called Super EPA, where we have made sure that the fish oil is molecularly distilled. It's, it's got all of the mercury and 18 other contaminants removed. So you have a Super EPA, maybe four grams a day. The other remedy for any kind of dryness, which will help the vagina as well as the eyes. So this goes, you know, it's, it's not specific to any organ. It's an equal opportunity EFA, as they say, would probably be CLA and GLA. CLA to the tune of three to 6,000 milligrams a day, or GLA anywhere up to one gram. As you know, the, the GLA of, of, that I prefer, of course, is the black currant seed oil because it's also balanced with a little bit of omega-3. So I know that those are areas of concern. <clears throat> In addition, if you need other types of help in terms of lubrication and something that you want to use, there's some wonderful pomegranate seed oil lubricants that are out on the market these days. I write about them specifically by name brand in, of course, Before the Change, which you know I'm very excited that all of you will now be reading. So, Teresa, any other questions that we have just between us girls? Um, we had a question that came in just before the doctor... Uh, hung up, and it was about, I think, cysticles, possibly uh, talking about um, a cystitis, if that would... That's a question for Dr. Drake. So you know something, if there are links to Dr. Drake, let's ask her about any kind of cystitis. That question I cannot answer, I cannot answer for you. But I would imagine that anything that is anti-inflammatory, like the oils that we've spoken about, the EPA, the DHA, the GLA, and the CLA, would probably be very helpful in terms of that regard as well. Any other questions that I can help with? Not at the moment. So let me leave you with some of the other issues in terms of just between us girls. So when it comes to rejuvenation, we're, we're talking about all of your, your tissues that could be getting a little bit more dry because of age, stage of life, maybe the environment. You know about the EFAs, your CLA, your GLA. Make sure that you're metabolizing your fats, whether they're essential fatty acids or whether they're, they're fats that you're eating in terms of your diet. And that's where your liver comes into play. And that's where your bile is important because all of these ultimately need to be metabolized by the body's production of bile, which breaks down fat into small particles, but bile is also a method for detoxifying the body, and that's where all of the hormones and the toxins, the oil-soluble poisons and pollutants are thrown into your system for elimination. So you want to make sure that your liver is functioning properly. I've told you about the three nutrients which are important in that regard. It's your methionine, it's your choline, it's your inositol at 500 milligrams three times a day, and consider a product that contains oxpile and choline and inositol, perhaps a little bit of taurine, which is an amino acid very important for the metabolism of bile acids. So when it comes to health, when it comes to issues just between us girls, you always have to look at hormones, number one. You have to look at EFAs, number two. And number three, your ability to digest and utilize them. That's where the liver, uh, digestive enzymes, and a, and a product like the bile builder that I created truly come in handy. So if that's it, are there any other questions, we will call it a day because it's just between us girls. I had one question earlier today from a young woman who wanted to know what you would recommend for severe menstrual cramping. Severe menstrual cramping, it's an EFA issue. Yes, we need, we need those anti-inflammatory elements that really help the body's production of the beneficial prostaglandins. This is where GLA shines. Now you've all heard about EPA and DHA and ALA, you know, alpha linolenic acid, but GLA is very specific to help prevent cramping. So if you still are suffering from PMS or perimenopause symptoms, you look at EFAs such as GLA to the tune of 360 milligrams up to one gram a day. You should also be looking at vitamin B6, maybe a activated vitamin B6 up to 50 to 75 milligrams, sometimes up to 100 if you've got issues with carpal tunnel. You should also be looking at magnesium. So between those three, your GLA, your B6, and your magnesium, your cramps should be a thing of the past. Excellent. Thank you so much, Anne Louise. You're entirely welcome. Is there anything else we can help with today? I 
do not currently see any other questions at the moment. All right, so we're going to say goodbye. Good luck. Thank you so much. I want you to check out Practice Happiness. And may your tissues be half healthy and happy for the rest of your life. This is Just Between Us Girls. See you next time.